Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. Uh, it's a fantastic day. I'm just chilling out in the polytunnel for a little bit before I do a tour. And yeah, it's a really exciting day for me today because it's my third anniversary of harvesting off this plot. And harvested a huge amount over the years. And in fact, just this year, we've harvested £2,000 worth of veg just uh, from January until now, which is the 20th of April, I think. Um, everything's going pretty well. Everything is a mess basically at the moment because we're just in transition. We're just transitioning from all the overwintered uh, crops, you know, all the brassicas, all the overwintered lettuces, all that sort of thing, over the, all the overwintered field beans. Uh, and we're just pulling all, all those, uh, you know, ready to come out. So some of them are out already and some of them we're just uh, pulling over the next couple of weeks and we're putting in all the summer crops. So it's a really exciting time for me, um, but it's quite hard work. So I'm just having a rest for three days and get stuck in uh, next week. So with that, I'll take you around and show you what we're up to. So we'll start with the polytunnel because that is a bit of a nightmare. Just look at that mess. But I'm leaving everything in at the moment, all these brassicas in because these are the last really quality brassicas that I've got on the site um, and they're still pretty good so these purple spreading broccoli leaves for example these purple spreading broccoli heads these are fine um, all the other PSB is finished some lovely uh, cabbage leaves here some decent kale leaves um, you know it's all going to seed like crazy but some nice cabbages um, you know it's not too bad every <laughs> every little bit of bench is just full of seedlings everywhere I've just planted loads and loads but still all the trestle tables are full I can start clearing some of these things out I've got carrots in here all my early um, tomatoes peas down there and still my squashes, strawberries, lots of strawberries come in. I'm really pleased. Not done anything special really with the uh, germination of, sorry, germination and um, fertilization of these, uh, but they seem to be coming on fine. Um, yeah, more and more, all my tomatoes, all sorts, more squashes. Yeah, it's all a bit crazy in here. Trumpuccinos and stuff, peppers, little herbs, new herbs for Debbie's plot. And then underneath here, still got lots and lots of, of brassicas. And unfortunately, because they're, you know, they can tolerate quite a bit of shade. They don't really mind too much that this table is absolutely full of stuff. Um, anyway, so these are gonna keep us going in spring greens basically for a few more weeks and then probably first or second week in May all of this everything is going to come out and get replaced with all the summer crops so that's pretty exciting and for now I just have to put up with the mess There's a few highlights the celery is absolutely amazing still that celery was planted over 12 months ago, still not gone to seed, superb quality. My uh, first succession of peas is doing really nicely, loads of little peas on here. These aren't very far away. This could go outside now, really, but just haven't got around to it, you can see. Lots and lots of flowers. I am pleased with the uh, early tomatoes. These are my favourite, Ildi, and they've got some flowers forming on them. And I have got some more. Uh, these are, oops, just got taffled up with me. Microphone. Um, these are Yellow Delight, and they've got flowers on as well, but I think not quite like in the cold and some tumbling toms as well, not doing too bad. Some peas, 
So that mess is the polytunnel. Oh, and the uh, runner beans growing on really nicely. Very pleased with those. Also in the polytunnel, I've got a few couple of courgettes, which are going okay too. Okay, so here's an overview of the plot. Now I've still got all of the covers on and the reason for that is that we've had no rain so there's no point taking them off because what they're doing at the moment is just providing that little bit of shelter from the wind and actually from the sun because it's been very sunny um, and there's no disadvantage to leaving them on because there's no rain but we are having some rain on Wednesday I think into the forecast so I'll probably take the covers off before then depending on how much rain it actually is and how cold it starts to get again anyway let's have a look so very pleased with these these are my earliest <coughs> uh, brassicas spring planted brassicas and obviously the hope is that these will be big enough and strong enough to take over from the ones in the polytunnel by the time I take those out in a couple of weeks time so that's pretty good they were all interplanted with radishes you can see radishes are really gorgeous so I'm very pleased with those this is the overwintered charred bed it's all grown very strongly very pleased with that and the gooseberry beds are all doing really well now I'm kind of watching for signs of mould on these because I did get a grey mould on them all and all this side of the plot uh, lost all the gooseberries. The ones down there were fine but no signs of mould at the moment. So this is my first main crop of bolt hardy beetroot and I've got some early stuff in but uh, this is the, ma the first main crop bed. I'll have a few more going in soon. And this is the best of my overwintered uh, lettuces. I'm not going to show you all of them, um, but this is Grenoble Red, and it is just the most amazing lettuce. Fantastic. Can't believe that I harvest this every single week. Pick a huge amount. It's just such a wonderful lettuce. And then I've got another bed in here of. Uh, Carvalho Nero um, kale and I don't normally put it in a coal frame you know there's not normally any point in doing that it's just a waste but I'm just trying to get this as early as I possibly can um, just because everything else has gone to seed. Look at the spinach situation now spinach is one of our most important harvests and this bed was overwintered and you can see it's just going to seed now And these seed heads, we're still picking them. They're just going in smoothie mixes. You know, it doesn't really matter. And there's still a decent amount of good leaves on here. This bed, by contrast, was planted in late winter. And this is doing much better. Um, so it's not, there's no sign at all of this bed going to seed. So really happy with that. So this one's still got two or three uh, weeks in it I should think and this bed's actually been overwintered but it's been overwintered without any protection and so it's actually quite a bit further behind uh, and it's only just coming into uh, full growth now so again I should have a few weeks on that bed. By the time all that other spinach is finished this bed should come on stream and I've actually planted this one quite densely denser than I would normally do spinach um, but that's because this will be harvested cut and come again for baby leaves and then it'd be left to, to grow on into mature leaves and by the time this bed finishes the New Zealand spinach will be ready and the New Zealand spinach will go through all the way through summer and into early autumn and then in early autumn transition back to true spinach again. This is another example of one of my overwintered lettuce beds planted beautifully with all of these spring onions and I'm actually harvesting this one not as a come again cut and come again crop but as hearts which is why there's a few gaps in there 
So over the next two or three weeks, all of this bed will be harvested and all these spring onions will be harvested and this will get replanted. So I just planted the main crop onions on my plot and on Jenny's plot and they're looking really nice. I'm very pleased with those. Next to those are the shallots and garlic with strawberries on the outside and trees in the center. And they're coming on really nicely. I'm very pleased with the, uh, with the garlic. This is a mix of elephant garlic and normal garlic on here. But the shallots I'm particularly pleased with. They're really looking great. Um, we've only got probably three or four weeks worth of onions left in the store. Uh, so it's nice to see the onions growing on so well and of course we'll transition to uh, to spring onions uh, when the um, when the main crop from last year runs out and we've actually got quite a few spring onions that are growing on you know nice big chunky uh, plants uh, that we planted in autumn of last year so I've actually got quite a lot of overwintered lettuce that's still in good condition I've got this one which is mostly Grenoble red. This one which is just a mix of all sorts. Another all sorts bed. Again, mixed with spring onions. And then one more. And so those four beds should last about three or four weeks. We're picking those really hard. And then we'll transition over to the spring planted uh, lettuces. So this is the spring planted Grenoble Red, as you can see, it's looking really fine. And we've got Salad Rocket on the outer edge there. And this is the spring planted Tessie. And the spring planted Cantrix. And both of those are looking really good. Again, they're only a week or so, a couple of weeks away from harvest so you can see that I've got plenty of lettuces and it's going to be a shame to pull out all of those overwintered beds but uh, I've just got to do it because I've got to get all that summer stuff in and then the final lettuce bed which is uh, Roxy which is actually one of my favourites it's uh, a really thick kind of crunchy leaf really gorgeous and that's interplanted with radishes around the outside. Have a quick look at the peas. So this is the furthest succession, um, furthest on. And so I think these were planted in December time, something like that. Uh, and there's nice peas on, on here. I've actually got some outside that are a little bit further on, but those plants didn't do very well. So no point showing you those. This is the next succession. Uh, these are growing really well. And the way that these were done was there was a cold frame lid on this uh, coal frame and so they were just planted at the back there and then they just grew um, into you know basically into this bed just and then when I put that support up just lifted them up and threaded them through and they're growing really nicely very pleased with those and some more down there and this is just my general strategy with peas I don't have a space specifically for them I just grow them at the back of the coal frames um, and just put a a stake in to support them and then it's a little bit difficult to see but I've got another row of peas uh, at the back there uh, and this is a good example of how I start all of my peas uh, early peas and as I say they don't get in the way of anything in the bed you can still plant up the whole of the coal frame uh, they just grow up the back and they get lovely shelter when they're young plants uh, the back of the coal frame just provides lots of shelter for them and uh, it's south facing the coal frame so they get plenty of light and yeah uh, it takes up no room at all so we just quickly look at the brassica successions so i've got masses of uh, spring greens in here these are actually cauliflowers but you can take the leaves uh, as spring greens loads and loads of those and down the there succession is outside and these i think are green sprout in broccoli these are cauliflowers and then these are cabbages uh, some more cabbages and down cauliflowers here. and cabbages in this coal frame and these were underneath plastic until about I don't know, two weeks ago two or three weeks ago and you can see they've just grown on really quickly and this is my early sprout bed and as you've probably known if you've seen my videos before i grow these in little clumps 
and I'm growing these for leaves and you can see the leaves are fantastic and I think um, sprout leaves are the healthiest of all the brassica leaves and yeah you just get a really beautiful supply of these young uh, tender leaves and you can see a little bit of white fly is here already but uh, hopefully I shall be eating sprout leaves again in a couple of weeks time just quickly look at the carrots so these are ready to harvest uh, but we're not harvesting them because we've still got carrots left in the store at home we've probably got about two weeks in there then we'll harvest those these and we've got three of these containers and by then hopefully this bed will be ready and i'm pretty pleased with the way these are growing it's starting to really kick into growth now um, the actual i pulled one up the other day the actual carrots are about three inches long something like that very spindly little things and i just planted this bed in here and these are just covered with that green um, shade cloth just to keep the ground moist uh, while they germinate next week i'll be clearing these old brassicas and all that bed will be carrots so i should probably just talk about the potatoes in the polytunnel uh, those were started um, in the house in tubs and it took them about 10 12 days to break surface um, no earthing up just plant them at the bottom and fill the tub up with uh, compost um, and they moved into the polytunnel in february time and yeah they've just grown on really well in here We've got plenty of frosts in the polytunnel, but I've just protected them with fleece. You can see the fleece uh, just bound up on the uh, on that little trestle table there. And yeah, it's just really simple to keep them going. And um, we've been harvesting potatoes now for a couple of weeks, um, and I've been really, really happy with the quality of them. In fact, um, you know, Debbie, I, I actually don't like potatoes, but all of the rest of the family do, and they say they're incredibly creamy. Um, and I don't need any butter with them and they're just absolutely raving about them obviously I could leave them in a little bit longer and get an even bigger harvest but this time of year it's all about getting top quality new potatoes as early as possible now we do still have a few weeks uh, maybe three or four weeks worth of potatoes in the store but um, yeah they're not a patch on fresh new potatoes just have a quick look at the trees I have never seen this much blossom on trees, all of the trees, it's just amazing. This one's the uh, little pear tree. And just as an aside, we have had fantastic results from dehydrating pears and apples. And so we're going to be doing a lot more of that this year. First bit of blossom on the cherry tree that I planted this year, last year rather. And I'm really pleased with this little border that I've got down the side of my plot and I'm just trying to start eradicating the bindweed so what I'm doing is I'm growing it up these canes and then eventually I'll take the canes out I'll bruise the leaves and then I'll put some plastic down I'll spray them with glyphosate and uh, hopefully that will get rid and that's really the only way to get this uh, bindweed out because it's all down intermeshed with all the roots of all the plants but uh, that works pretty well and there's no chance of any cross-contamination of uh, uh, any of the other plants with the glyphosate when you do it that way this little pear tree this year nice bit of blossom on here and this is invincible and it sounds like a really interesting pair so we'll see how that goes last year's plum tree no blossom on that yet new apple trees very pleased with the way those are going so just taking a quick walk down the green drive to uh, debbie's plot that's the quick overview and debbie's well on with uh, transitioning over to summer 
we've still got a few bits of kale to come out and some collets down there but everything's going well strawberries are going really nicely salad rocket there a few board beans and her beds are starting to look really nice and she's putting lots more herb beds in we've got another herb bed here I think there's another one going in there and there's another one over there and there's lots of life and all these different types of berry bushes that she's got and I've had a lot of blossom on this plum tree we've hardly had any harvest off this plum tree it's a beautiful tree but uh, in the past it's always seemed to get some sort of fungal infection or some you know some problem insect infestation or something so we will see whether we actually get something off it this year and uh, we've got these stereo marge 2 broad beans down here and uh, so hopefully these will be the first bean that we eat in theory although I've, I'm betting on my runner beans actually so we'll have to see and the black and the red currants are absolutely amazing they're really laden just huge quantities and Debbie really likes these I can't stand currants but she likes them she makes lots of uh, compots and things for them more <laughs> pear trees with just again stunning quantities of blossom so we're going to be picking off a lot of uh, little pears I think this year globe artichokes that we transplanted from Jenny's plot they didn't do very well last year but wow look at them now and then we've got some perennial kales it's not looking great actually this one but uh, hopefully the warm weather will uh, turn it around it's looking a bit short of nutrients but there's plenty of nutrients in the ground so um, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, purple tinge is but there's some more down there as well and there's all the berries this is a, a kiwi berry and to be honest it's not looking <laughs> that healthy it, uh, it did start off growing and then we had quite a few frosts so we might have lost that one but the uh, the gooseberries the honeyberries um, the uh, loganberries the raspberries the blackberries um, I'm running out now of uh, names what's this one goji berries they're all looking great look at this cherry this was a, a five pound bargain from uh, Morrison's and Debbie's trained it really nicely um, and gosh what a stunning amount of blossom there is on this we absolutely love cherries so I don't think we could ever plant enough trees to feed ourselves just making my way to Jenny's plot as you can probably see a whole load of brassicas that have just gone to seed and need clearing out and there's the overview of the plot not very easy to see so consistent with everything else that we're seeing fruit trees absolutely fantastic so far and another amazing pear tree there and the field beans which we've been harvesting just hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of uh, basically the broad bean tips off these and everybody's been loving them now uh, we've still got plenty on but they are starting to get a little bit tougher now but they're still fine for cooking and so we'll probably be harvesting those for another couple of weeks um, and then all the tops will be chopped off all the roots will be left in the ground all the tops will be chopped up and put on that bed there which has got the brassicas in it and they'll be used as a mulch and then we'll put the compost um, one inch compost on top of those and that's where all of the squashes are going these few leeks and all of these are cleared as I say the roots will be left in the ground because they're full of nitrogen that's where the um, brassicas are going 
and then those will be netted and then on this bed once we've cleared all that purple sprouting broccoli down there this bed will be celeriac parsnips carrots uh, basically uh, leeks anything that we can just cover up in a fine net and just leave until autumn basically so uh, apart from the odd weed uh, this is a plant and forget bed so then these are the new uh, beds that I put in and there are strawberries down the outside and garlic three rows of garlic on the inside and very pleased with those they've grown really well let's get down so you can see it's a pretty good sized uh, stalks on those this is the elephant garlic bed two rows of elephant garlic and again strawberries on the outside and these are a lot a lot lot thicker than the uh, ordinary garlic which is I guess not surprising and then there's a row of green garlic just down here and that will be harvested in a couple of weeks time and then up there will go a bean frame and then next up will go courgettes and then all the rest of that will be crown prints with a couple of uh, butternut squash and then we've got the first of the broad bean beds the second broad bean bed planted on the same day same seeds but these have got this little polythene windbreak and this has brought these on no end so i'm not sure they're bigger plants and uh, healthier plants and these are all aquadulce but they've not grown anywhere near as tall as uh, plants last year but they're earlier and just look at the amount of flowers on them absolutely amazing so i've just finished planting the last of the onions so there's onions down here onions down there strawberries on the outside and then the main uh, early beds are down there let's take a close look at those so these are the overwintered onions they're looking really excellent and i've got one more row of overwintered onions down here and then the rest of that is garlic and then last and probably least there's some more currants i think there's red white blue and pink or something four different varieties there and some uh, autumn fruiting raspberries i think i'll try again with the overview of uh, jenny's pot so there you go it's the water brassicas and the beans and the trees yeah, i think that was a very long tour so uh, all i've got to do now is say goodbye thanks for watching and i'll see you soon